a mission, a blessing to the world. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Titus 2, and we get into Titus. In Titus 2, verse 11 to 14, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldliness passions and to live self-control, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. So in Titus, it's not about us by ourselves. If you read the last verse, it says, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness. So yes, you make that faithful decision like Abraham is an individual decision. But when God did it, when God died on the cross for the sins of humanity, he died for all of us. That is the church that is the family. So don't ever forget that. You know, one, one of the biggest issues with us in America is that we live in our individual worlds. And in Titus 2, let us not forget that it is about the church. God takes us from over there of death and he brings it over here, Ephesians 2, of life. Because Christ paid for the penalty, but it's not over that you're forgiven. Because in that process, God puts himself in your heart. Who is that? It's the Holy Spirit of God lives in you. So to be forgiven is not just a final thing. And this is where we kind of miss the boat. We live in comfortable America where we say, okay, me and my God and my Holy Spirit, and I'm going to have my own way. That is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's only half of it. Because the Spirit of God lives in you, and you are placed physically, communally, in the body of Christ. Some people call it the local church. There is a universal church, which is all the ones who God has saved and paid for the penalty and those who sincerely have the faith like Abraham. But it's the local church that God places you in. And don't ever forget, this is the greatest benefit, the greatest blessing. You see, you part of the church, you can read Titus 2. That's how you can overcome your sinful body and your sin nature. You continue to struggle but it is through the church that you mature in Christ and you can serve Christ. Now, how can we be the mission to this world? 2 Timothy 2, 2. You then, my son, be strong in grace that is in Christ Jesus and believe things that you have heard. We say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable men who will also be qualified to each other. So the bottom line with 2 Timothy 2, 2 is not about just us, doing Christ's mission on earth, but to equip others to do the work. Whatever God has given you, you must train others to do that. That's the mission. So let's get back to the basic. What debt got to do with the gospel? Debt has nothing to do with the gospel if the gospel has nothing to do with the church. If the gospel has nothing to do with the church, then the Vietnamese lunar year has nothing to do with the gospel. Therefore, it means nothing. But it means everything if in fact the gospel of Christ is simply this, that you are, after you're forgiven, you are placed in the local church to grow and to multiply and to equip others to do the work. So, I'm going to close here and um, what I like to do is have a stand and I want to read um, Romans 12 together, and then I'm going to ask you to um, consider making a couple decisions, okay? Um. Chapter 12 Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. 
This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Before, I want to give you an opportunity to make a decision. Uh, again, it's not an altar call. Uh, it's a decision that you make in your heart with Christ. But I, 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 on, on Valentine 2010 and uh, Lunar New Year, I want to give you an opportunity, um, like we did in our family, uh, 2008 and 2009. Uh, I want you to have an opportunity to surrender your life to Christ and, and to truly accept and believe in Jesus as Abraham's faith and, uh, and make that decision today if you never made that decision to come to Christ. And uh, for those of you who, um, uh, the band can start coming up and uh, we're gonna close with the last song with uh, Amazing Grace and then, uh, so you guys can come up. And then the second group, I want you to make a decision if you haven't been baptized, uh, I would like you to seriously pray about that because if you already uh, ask God to forgive you and have a sincere faith like Abraham, you need to make a public confession uh, through baptism. And I'll help you to uh, write and deliver a testimony. So because it's not about uh, me uh, walking you through or Moshe Ung's going to dump you in the water. No, it's about you talking about, hey, this is what Jesus did to my life. So we work with you on a testimony and perhaps sometimes in the summer you can get baptized. And, and thirdly, for those of us who are already uh, have uh, Christ as the Lord of our life and uh, you're part of the church, and like I said, if you're a visitor, if you're part of another church, you can consider where God's calling you as ministry. What you need to do is start praying. You know, you know the needs of this church. So I'm going to ask you as a third person, uh, who already come to Christ, that you need to think of the things that we need to pray for this church. For example, they're going through uh, buying a piece of land, looking for a building. Uh, there's a new ministry team amongst the ministers that we come together, pray that we would have a vision to lead this church in the next few years. And uh, pray that, that the community here would be uh, open. The huge, I mean, everywhere I go here, it's a multicultural community. I don't know about you guys, but I, I love colors. Okay, so it's why it's like this one. Okay, that's my light take that. But anyway, uh, the door is wide open for us. So let's pray. Okay, so let's listen and uh, reflect on what God is doing. And then the, the band's gonna uh, lead us in a, a worship a song as we close and we go downstairs for food. Lord, I thank you so much for an incredible uh, opportunity this morning. Um, God, help us to, uh, to hear your voice through your word and know that it's not about uh, us, but it's about you. And sometimes, Lord, is so hard because we live in a world that is filled with ideas and voices that talks about us. And Lord, forgive me when I tend to be selfish and I think about the church and its needs. And uh, forgive me when I point fingers 
and don't realize that the fingers point back to me. And so, Father, I ask for forgiveness. I stand here this morning with my brothers and sisters that we would unite. Uh, because the world out there needs you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for those who stood with us and be willing to uh, publicly declare their faith, their saving faith to you. We pray that you will bless them and prepare them as we help them to uh, develop their testimony and uh, that they would have an opportunity to get baptized. And even those who uh, have not made the decision for you today, Lord, may you will continue to do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.